Hello everyone, I am Dr. Vaishnavi, your ENT faculty at an academy platform. So today I am here to discuss uh, five MCQs in 15 minutes with you. So you can uh, think of the question, uh, think of the answer when you look at the question and uh, I'll give you about 30 seconds time to think over it and then uh, I will explain the question to you and the options and the answers to you. So let's begin with it. Crescentic hairline is an otoscopic finding in otomycosis, otosclerosis, secretory otitis media, acute otitis media. So where do you get this crescentic hairline? So where do you get this crescentic hairline? Think of the options, think of the answer and get ready with the answer in the next 30 seconds. And while you're getting ready with the answer, let me draw one picture for you. So where do you get a crescentic hairline? Where do you get a crescentic line like this when you see the tympanic membrane from the external auditory canal? So if you visualize and you see with the help of photoscope a crescentic line, in which condition do you, this? do you get this? This basically means that there is an air level above and there is a fluid level below because of which you are getting a line like this or a crescentic shadow like this. So this just means that there is some effusion in the middle ear and this is typically seen in secretory otitis media. So secretory otitis media or middle ear effusion or otitis media with effusion is a condition where you get middle ear, uh, where the middle ear is filled with fluid as a result of which you get this crescentic line. Now there are various tympanic membrane findings that you see in secretory otitis media, some of which are retraction. So the tympanic membrane may be retracted there may be bulging tympanic membrane the cone of light may be distorted okay so the cone of light may be distorted and then you may have uh, decreased mobility of the tympanic membrane but the typical feature that differentiates secretory otitis media from other middle ear conditions is presence of air bubble. If you see presence of air bubble like this in the tympanic membrane or if you get an air fluid level. So if there is an air bubble or if there is an air fluid level that is very very typical of secretory otitis media. In automycosis, you get a typical appearance which is called as wet newspaper appearance. This is a typical appearance that you get in automycosis. In autosclerosis, you get a typical sign which is called as short sign. So short sign is a sign where there is a pinkish hue on the promontory which is seen through an intact tympanic membrane. When there is an active autosclerotic focus, you get a pinkish hue of the promontory through an intact tympanic membrane and that sign is called as short sign. In acute otitis media, there are four stages. Depending upon the stage, you will have the tympanic membrane finding. But the typical finding that you stage in the see in the stage of pre-saturation is a cartwheel appearance. So cartwheel appearance is a typical finding that you see in stage of pre-separation in acute otitis media where there are blood vessels which radiate from the periphery to center. So this is the typical finding that you see in acute otitis media. So I hope you are clear with this MCQ. Let's move to the next one. Greasing the sign is edema and tenderness over the posterior border of the mastoid process, unilateral pulsating otoria, vertigo and nystagmus on increasing the pressure in the external auditory canal tenderness at the tip of mastoid. So please think of the answer. Meanwhile, let me draw one diagram again for you. So whenever there is a sigmoid sinus thrombosis, we know the posterior limit of the mastoid is marked by the sigmoid sinus. If there is a CSOM, the infection can go into the mastoid and from there into the sigmoid sinus, this can result in sigmoid sinus thrombosis. 
so if there is a sigmoid sinus thrombosis or a lateral sinus thrombosis if i ask you that will the venous return from the mastoid emissary veins get impaired yes they will get impaired so if the venous return is impaired will there be edema across the posterior border of the mastoid yes and whenever there is thrombosis obviously there is going to be pain as well so edema and tenderness over the posterior border of the mastoid is typically seen in gray singer sign along with this there will be bluish discoloration as well so this is a typical finding that you get in gray singer sign where there is edema and tenderness over the posterior border of the mastoid with bluish discoloration of the mastoid when there is a tenderness at the tip of the mastoid it is suggestive of mastoiditis so when there is an inflammation of the mastoid air cell that they will have tenderness over the mastoid as well as the tip of the mastoid and if the pus breaks the tip of the mastoid it can go into the sternocleidomastoid muscle so you can have this tenderness on the tip of the mastoid in mastoiditis vertigo and nystagmus on increasing the pressure in the exploratory canal is suggestive of fistula test so in fistula test whenever you increase the pressure in the external auditory canal the tympanic membrane is pushed in as a result the middle ear space gets compromised there is an increase in the pressure so if there is no communication between the middle ear and the inner ear the pressure changes are not transmitted but if there is a communication this pressure changes are transmitted resulting in increased pressure in the inner ear fluids resulting in vertigo and nystagmus so that is the basis of your fistula test okay unilateral pulsating otorhea is again seen in mastoiditis it is also seen in asom but it is seen in mastoiditis as well so this is the uh, key for this mcq let's go to the next question schwabax test is a comparison between air and bone conduction of the same ear comparison between the bone conduction of both ears at the same time comparison of the duration of bone conduction of the patient and the examiner so please think of this test what is the answer meanwhile let me explain this mcq to you with the help of a diagram so what do we do in this schwabax test or absolute bone conduction test both the tests are essentially the same in schwabax test we do not occlude the external auditory canal that's the only difference between the abc test and the schwabax test so what do we do if this is the examiner and this is the patient the first prerequisite is the examiner should have a normal hearing sensitivity if the examiner is not having normal hearing sensitivity then he cannot perform this test on his patient so if the examiner is having normal hearing sensitivity we put the tuning fork we vibrate the tuning fork and place it first over the patient's mastoid occluding the external auditory canal if it is an absolute bone conduction test you do not occlude the external auditory canal if it is a schwabax test you keep it on the mastoid process and tell the patient to inform you when he stops to hear the sound when the patient stops to hear the sound the tuning fork is transferred from the patient's mastoid to the examiner's mastoid if the patient stops to hear and the examiner stops to hear then it is normal meaning the patient's hearing is the same as examiner and we already know prerequisite that the examiner's hearing should be normal only then we can perform this test now if the patient stops to hear and the examiner still continues to hear it means what the patient's bone conduction is impaired and bone conduction is a bone conduction measures your sensory neural pathway so if the patient is unable to hear and the examiner is able to hear it means that the patient is having sensory neural hearing loss okay so this is the test that you do if you occlude the external auditory canal then it becomes abc if you do not occlude the external auditory canal then it becomes schwabax test so it is a comparison of the duration of bone conduction between the patient and the examiner so that's the answer for this mcq let's go to the next test 
reservoir sign is a characteristic sign in acute mastoid abscess acute otitis media chronic otitis media secretory otitis media so please think of the answer meanwhile again i want to draw one picture for you okay so whenever you have got pus in the mastoid now when there is pus in the mastoid we call it as mastoiditis and if this pus is accumulating into the entire mastoid and it is collecting to form an abscess then we call it as an acute mastoid abscess now this pus can communicate from your mastoid to your middle ear via the adductus now the middle ear also gets filled with pus and this pus comes out from the middle ear into the external auditory canal via the perforation through the tympanic membrane now if you are able to suck this pus off and clean this pus off and you are able to remove that pus off and you are able to uh, do an oral toileting if you are able to do that and you see that after doing that again the pus recurs or it fills up the entire external auditory canal it means that there is a reservoir sign positive so reservoir sign positive means after mopping the external auditory canal or after suctioning the pus from the external auditory canal immediately there is again recurrence of the pus or the pus again relapses to come back into the external auditory canal that sign is called as reservoir sign now reservoir sign is suggestive of acute mastoiditis or an acute mastoid abscess in acute otitis media also you may have pus coming out from the middle ear into the external auditory canal but when you suck the pus you are removing almost all the effusion in the middle ear as a result it does not recur but what is happening in a mastoiditis or a mastoid abscess you are suctioning whatever is there in the exploratory canal and part of it in the middle ear whatever you have suctioned again gets filled up because mastoid is acting as a reservoir of pus now so you are cleaning it is throwing out again so you are cleaning it is throwing out again so it is a specific feature of mastoiditis or a mastoid abscess it is not seen in acute otitis media or chronic otitis media in secretory otitis media you don't get any reservoir sign but i have already discussed with you what are the signs of the tympanic membrane in my first mcq with secretory otitis media let's go to the fourth mcq which is your gradinigo syndrome gradinigo syndrome occurs in mastoid abscess petrocytis chronic otitis media secretory otitis media so while you are thinking of the answer let me draw a diagram for you okay so what is gradinigo syndrome it is a syndrome that you see in petrocytes so what do you get in this whenever there is a middle ear pathology the inflammation or the pathology from the middle ear can go to the inner ear from the inner ear it can go to the petrous apex as well now we know that in the petrous apex we have 5 and 6 nerve the 7th and 8th nerve go in the internal auditory meatus so we have the from the pons we have four cranial nerves coming 5 and 6 go anteriorly 7 and 8 go in the internal auditory meatus now when there is a petrocytis or inflammation of the petrous apex there is involvement of the sixth nerve and fifth nerve as a result what will they have fifth nerve involvement will present as deep seated retro orbital pain okay they will present as deep seated retro orbital pain why will they have pain because we have ophthalmic maxillary and mandibular division so the ophthalmic division involvement will present as retro orbital pain sixth nerve involvement will result in lateral rectus palsy okay so your sixth nerve involvement will result in lateral rectus palsy and what is the primary 
pathology what is causing this inflammation of the pituitary apex it is your chronic otitis media and how do the chronic otitis media present clinically as persistent ear discharge so this triad is called as gradinigo triad or gradinigo syndrome which is seen in pituitaries so if you know the anatomy it becomes absolutely easy for you to understand the pathologies as well let's go and find out what do we have on an academy as a offering for you so you can first of all find me on various plus batch courses so these plus courses are paid courses so you have to subscribe you can subscribe for a month you can subscribe for 3 months you can subscribe for a year the choice is absolutely yours but what am i teaching on the plus platform i am going to take medical marathon and mcq marathon for fmg i'm doing a capsule course on ent where i will be discussing the entire concepts of ent and in the foundation batch course it is a full fledged batch course for people who are preparing for the neat pg 2021 so here we are going to do concepts also discuss a lot about mcqs so even if you subscribe for one particular course you can have access to all the courses also you have access to all recorded classes and you also have attending live classes so these are all the advantages that you have if you take a plus course if you do not want to take a plus course you can always attend the special classes so i will be available next month or the onwards every friday 9 pm on the unacademy special class platform which is an absolutely free platform for those who think they have financial concerns and financial burden please attend the free classes to begin benefit out of the subject and to be able to uh, clear your doubts as well you can find me on my whatsapp number which is 9246558053 to get regular updates or also on my telegram link which is ent updates by dr vaishnavi so on this you can i have started a ritual where you can take a picture and post not a picture of yours but you need to take a picture of any particular topic or any particular concept or any particular mcq which you find it difficult so you just take a picture and post it to me and i will be able to help you back with the answers with references with small videos that could help you and you will not waste your time trying to understand that and that's how you gain an access to time and you can do it for more subjects as well so you can reach me out on my telegram link or my whatsapp link you can also the how do you go to these courses so you can go to the neat pg goal when you go to the an academy platform go to the neat pg after you go to neat pg you will have various educators list you can choose whichever educator that you want to follow you can select free classes you can select paid classes you have live doubt clearing session and we have polls to check every in every class where you stand in comparison with your colleagues so that you have an actual check of how good or how much attentive are you in the class as well so we have made many things happening on the live class please experience one live class to understand what is happening at the live classes so there are various payment methods that you can use after you go to the academy platform and i will just brief you about what is happening here on our platform we are doing a fast revision of basics for 21 those who are preparing for the neat pg 21 throw back previous year questions which comes every 7 pm every day at 7 pm we have quiz at 9 pm clinical mcqs at 10, 10 pm and at 11 pm we have image based questions so you have a good variety of uh, questions concepts everything so that you can make your preparation much easier sitting at your home so you can find me next on the foundation batch course for neat pg 21 so here brother will be top educators of the country who will teach you for your neat pg 21 so that you become thorough with all the subjects so hope i found you i hope you found my session useful thank you for your patient listening bye bye